The tutorials on this website have been demonstrating features of POP11, which is the core language of the Poplog system. All the tutorials have made use of the Poplog editor for various purposes. This tutorial is entirely about the editor indicating some of what it can do and then focus in on a minimal subset that you need to know about in order to use it to learn or to write programs or to test programs or debug them. Just to illustrate some of the things that it can do that I'm not going to go into, um, the first thing is that it can operate in multi-window mode, so the command xved, uh, which I've just given now, produces a little window and I can use that to do things. For instance, I can in invoke teach, uh, teach file, teach strings. Um, in fact, we've got the help strings file because there isn't a teach strings file, which I had forgotten. But anyway, um, so what you see here is that the two quite separate windows with information and I can get another one, which uh, might be, for instance, um, teach river, which I've shown in another tutorial. And I can bring that back on here. And uh, these files, uh, these windows can multiply <laughs> as much as needed, including a window in which you're running programs. For instance, in the river program, uh, river uh, window, I could type a command just to test out what it'll do, like 99 times 9 with the print arrow, and then I can do escape D to run it and that will produce an output window which has the result printed out which is 891 and if I go back here and do a, a ask for the square root of that number and escape D again that also comes out in the output window so you can see that uh, VID can handle a whole variety of windows um, one of the demonstrations that shows how those windows um, can invoke graphical windows is the um, uh, the demo that I'm going to show you now, which uh, makes use of a little natural language interface. So if I type pop11 plus g blocks, that runs a saved image, the blocks g blocks saved image. It asks if I want xvid, I type y, and then I get um, that starts up with a, a vid window on the left here, and and on the right there's a little um, graphical window showing a table and some blocks on it and that's a hand and I'm going to go very fast because I'm not really wanting to explain the details but if I now type help on the left it gives me some examples of sentences I can um, give to the program and if I choose one like um, um, put a block on the table onto a blue bo block, I will p hit the enter key that analyzes that uh, sentence and shows it broken down into substructures here, but if I click on continue as it requests here, I'll then get a parse tree visible showing how that sentence is constructed, put a block on the table on a blue block and so on. If I click on continue again, this continues. Now I'm not going to go through all of that, I'm just showing that uh, in addition to the text windows, XVED can invoke other windows like this graphical window and the graphical window that showed the parse tree. Um, so let's just quit that. From now on I'm not going to use the multi-window mechanism, I'll just use VED, which is the plain single window text editor. Um, so if I run VED now, um, I'll r run teach strings, uh, teach Eliza, say. Okay. I don't want to expand, so I type no. And you see I now get the um, teach file with information about how to write an ELISA program. I'm not at this stage going to do anything with it. I want to show only that this uses half of the window that's available for this demo. If I type escape W it will use up the whole window and I can see more of this. And if I um, 
ask for another teach file. For instance, if I go to the end of this, it it says that further reading reading includes teach database down here. If I type escape h, I get the teach database file in the upper half and the teach Eliza file in the lower half. If I then go to teach lists, I'll get another file. And now I have three files uh, in the editor, but only two of which are visible at a time. But I can rotate around them. One way is to type escape e, and that shows me which files are available, and then I can type the number. For instance, if I want to go back to the ELISA file, I can type 3 now, and that puts me in the ELISA file here. It can be a little confusing, especially when one goes quickly, but you can get used to it, and many people like working with that one window, which can have one or two files visible at a time, rather than lots of files scattered all over the screen. Um, but it's all a matter of taste. Uh, another thing that's possible with both the XVED system and this plain text VED system is a menu command. But the menu command will only work if you have POP11 running with the graphical facilities uh, which are provided in Linux. Um, if I type menu in the VED command line up there and then enter, it brings up on my screen, which I will now move into view, this panel, which is a menu, which is called the top level menu, which enables me to invoke other things. For instance, if I click on Tutor, it reads in a teach file, which is a quick introduction to the editor. If I click on Page Down, it will scroll through that, through that teach file. If I click on Page Up, it closes up, scrolls up, and so on. If I click on something that's got three dots, then it'll bring me another menu, which in this case came off the screen, but I'll bring it in. And this has stuff about marking ranges and going to the start or the end of the range and compiling a file and, fit and doing all sorts of things. Um, so what this shows is that the editor can be used with graphical mouse driven menus and furthermore what I'm not going to show you is that you can specify what the menus should be yourself they're just all written in POP11 and um, I, I will just show you one of them for instance there's one here which is called um, say um, editor so I think that if I type show menu editor it should get in the menu definition I'm going to now type escape W to show me that. So you can see the menu definition is just is just a p file full of pop 11 instructions, of which the main thing is this thing which says define menu editor, so that's the name, and then there's lots of stuff here which define the various buttons that are visible on the menu file. It's in two columns. Uh, notice, and if I click on it, uh, now you can see the editor, uh, the menu editors in two columns. So I'm not going to go into the details, but just here on the left you see the sort of format. So if if on the left is the string that shows up in the menu button, and on the right is an indication of what should happen when that uh, button is clicked. In this case, it'll get another menu. In other cases, it will run a help file, and in other cases, it may do other things. So I can dismiss these help files by just click on dismiss or I'll click on the dismiss all button and that gets rid of all the menus. I can get rid of the files in the editor by typing escape Q and 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 now I've come right out of the editor again and I am talking to the Linux shell. Uh, so there are commands available which I'm not going to demonstrate but Linux commands. I'll show you one. If I type date it'll give me the date and the time.